Welcome back. I don't know if this is going to be that professional or no. I'm biased when it comes to Cairo, when it comes to our Cairo, when it comes to Tahrir Square and to the campus of the AUC in Tahrir Square and to our museum in Tahrir Square. And when I knew that uh, there is a cultural festival organized in Tahrir and it's named like that, Tahrir Cultural Festival, I was happy to know that uh, my guests are going to speak about that and uh, are going to tell me all the details about this event and to what extent they were happy to uh, launch this festival and to make it annually. Before we continue, let me first welcome my dear uh, guests live here in the studio, Dr. Jillian Campana, member of the organizing committee and professor and associate dean for undergraduate studies, School of Humanities and Social Sciences, and um, one of my daughters, Azima Salama. Uh, she's a student and she was also one of the uh, participants or one of the organizers, uh, let's be accurate, of this festival. Um, I'm happy and we are, very much, um, uh, we are very much honored and delighted to have you both on Al TV International Screen. Mm, thank you. Azima, if you permit me, I'm going to start with uh, yes, Dr. Uh, <laughs> Jillian. But before that, we are going to go a very short break and we are going to turn back with more. Okay? Wonderful. Thank you. A short break. <laughs> It is my pleasure to welcome you back to AUC Tahrir Square to celebrate the launch of the first AUC Tahrir Cultural Festival. Our historic campus in the heart of downtown Cairo is central to our identity and our vision to build and connect an ethically engaged community of scholars, practitioners and creatives. Welcome back. Um, Dr. Campana, um, how the idea itself came? We've really wanted to reconnect both campuses. You know, we have this campus in Tagamo, mm -hmm. and so many people who are there never leave it. They may live in New Cairo. They don't come downtown anymore. There's a lot of compounds up there. And so we've really lost a certain connection with mm -hmm. the downtown community. I think um, the campus at AUC New Cairo is amazing. It's beautiful. It has so much to offer, but it doesn't have the vibrancy of a downtown. And you know, the downtown is surrounded by so many iconic cultural buildings. The architecture is incredible. And so we've been talking for a while about how to reconnect students and the entire community in New Cairo to the downtown campus, and then also to bring the downtown residents back to AUC to yeah. be more inclusive. And so we're thinking about a lot of different initiatives, maybe even bringing some classes back to Tahrir, which would be amazing for students. Um, and then this festival was an idea that we had kind of in the, in the early fall where we thought, if we open up the campus mm -hmm. to everyone in the downtown community and, and bring the students from New Cairo back there, we can maybe engage in, in more connections mm -hmm. between those two groups so it's really a way to kind of foster more of a connection and and to just let these two communities which are both really incredible yeah. um, have a relationship with one another once again listening to the other side of the coin what have you felt when you enter the campus here in Tahrir Square uh, personally uh, every time I enter Tahrir campus I feel like it's so more in touch with Cozy. The, yeah, it's cozy and it's so much more in touch with the place in which it's mm -hmm. located. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Central Cairo has always been like a very culturally significant uh, place mm -hmm. in Egypt. And so I feel like it's definitely more uh, like in touch with the culture and with Egypt. Um, and it's more accessible as well mm -hmm. for me because it's, you know, 
central Cairo always mm -hmm. will always hold this like you know very intimate place mm -hmm. um, in our hearts and so I think it's very refreshing as well to kind of take a break from the other campus especially when it comes to like uh, cultural events or artistic events or things like plays and screenings mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's definitely within the perfect context there how much time did you take to prepare for the festival a very long time, probably <laughs> four or five months. Oh. It's a lot of background trying yeah. to get the right people to deliver panels, to do the exhibitions, to do the performances. As we saw in the, in the video that, that just played, there's an Arabic choir that performed. There are many performances, children's puppet show, al Warsha Theater. Leave something for next year. I know. <laughs> no, we have so much. This is the thing about AUC. I, I mean, genuinely, yeah. we have so much to offer. And so... It really is. It's not. It's not limited at all. I it's mean, limitless. I, um, um, if I were you, I mean, when it comes to things like that, and I know that I'm going to repeat this, or I'm going to have the festival um, uh, annually, I I should <coughs> beg your pardon. I should um, introduce or or make this launch, and then think about what I'm going to do every single year mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. we are that rich to know that every edition is going to be better or richer than mm -hmm. the one before well i think when people went to the panels and the exhibitions and the performances i think they came up with new ideas oh. this is the thing when you see something when you see a piece of art or when you go to a panel there was a wonderful panel that i was at last night mm -hmm. about um how the museums in cairo are trying to um, bring elements of the rich, you know, Egyptian heritage mm. to the to the programming, to the exhibitions, to the curation, and even to the architecture. Yeah. We had some folks from GEM, mm. and they were talking about, you know, how that, that new museum has been built. So that's an amazing topic, but then listening to the audience mm -hmm. and their questions, it just, it kind of made me think of four or five new panels mm -hmm. that we could do next year on tangential topics. What activity was the closest to you as um, not only a student, an Egyptian? Uh, personally, for me, uh, I'm a visual arts student. Mm -hmm. And so uh, our exhibition, our senior show, um, was held in the context of AUC Tahrir Cultural Fest. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the most, uh, I think, in touch for me, because obviously my work is mm -hmm. in the show, but also Everybody in this exhibition deals with the context of Cairo to some degree mm. uh, from very different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's really hard to separate Cairo from our work mm. as artists mm -hmm. because you know, it's where we live and it's what we see and it's what we experience. And I feel like those experiences and those kind of sensory elements really come out in our work. Alima, you were that young, <laughs> believe it or no from a mom. <laughs> when you go to any place in Egypt, you are going to feel this. Mm -hmm. If you go to El Minya and Suhag in Upper Egypt, you are going to feel this. Mm -hmm. If you go to El Shariya or El Daqahleya in Delta, you are going to feel this. Think about that and uh, we are going to be meeting again and I'm going to remind you of what I've said mm -hmm. now on the 22nd of April 2024. <laughs> um, Dr. Campana, when you were talking to me about uh, the different panels and the richness of what you have there, mm -hmm. you reminded me of the 18th of April at the World Heritage Day. Mm -hmm. If you were going to have uh, this festival next year on the very same timing, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's going to be such a wonderful idea to Absolutely. celebrate the World Heritage Day because yes. we do have yes. UNESCO sites here yes. in Egypt and this is going to be a kind of celebration the World Heritage Day where in Tahrir yes How do I, you agree. See this? I think this is incredible this is a wonderful idea I'll bring it back <laughs> to, the, to the to the committee I mean I think that one of the things we're grappling with is how we have this incredible heritage mm -hmm. buildings iconic people and then also the city is so rapidly mm -hmm. developing and so I think a lot of people feel that there's somewhat of a threat of losing the feel mm -hmm. of downtown Cairo but a lot of the panels and the discussions are about how do you bring in new things? How do you develop to a certain extent and also maintain the richness of the heritage? How do you keep that line? Tell you something. Mm. Egypt was all the time for thousands of years the melting pot. All civilization came and they were melted here in Egypt. Yeah. And so, and old Cairo, or Cairo, mm. is part and parcel of our Egyptian identity. So it's never, it, it will never be lost. Yes. I feel, I don't know if this is right or wrong, that you were here for years. True? Yes, eight. 
and it's my second time. I lived here in the early 90s, yeah. and I loved it. I was a student at Tahrir, <laughs> and I came back mm -hmm. because there's something about Egypt, and it's the people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the beauty of, of Egypt. It's really unparalleled, but it's the warmth of the people. And so I actually was looking to come back for about 20 years. So oh. I returned eight years ago, and I've been here for eight years. Because I, I asked you this question because I wanted to know, as a foreigner, what's your feeling when you were there in Tahrir or in the campus of mm. the AUC in Tahrir Square? Yeah. How have you found this diff these differences mm. between two, despite the fact mm. that here you are dealing with Egyptians and here you are dealing also with Egyptians. Yes. There's a residue that exists in mm -hmm. Tahrir that you feel the history. Mm -hmm. You look around in the architecture, you know, I mean, it's Islamic architecture, Neo Mamluk, Umm Khattoum performed mm -hmm. there in 1937. And there's this feeling of the history of the mm -hmm. place. And I think when anyone, mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. any cultural workers, any mm -hmm. acad academicians, when they're in a place that is that rich, I think it, it inspires them to dig a little bit mm -hmm. deeper, and and then the work comes out a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. So it's also it, when you're when you're there, you're connected to, to all of the yeah. downtown, to everything, and so that sort of imbues the work. Yeah. Um, as as a student of art visuals, I think Cairo is um, an endless source of a lot. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, to, to speak here in a specific about the festival, mm -hmm. how it's a way to promote Cairo, and particularly via visual art. Mm. Um, I think that it's definitely a very... Uh, because when you're making art, you kind of... We all immediately just absorb things from our surroundings, mm -hmm. and we take that, and we process it, and we worked on it, um, and we made it into art, and this... This is the first time actually the visual arts exhibition has been held in the context mm -hmm. of AUC Tahrir Cultural Fest. And I think it was, it was a perfect fit because mm -hmm. um, it wasn't pre-planned that we're going to make our projects about Cairo mm -hmm. at all. Uh, we just happened to kind of put that out there mm -hmm. and they all became, a, like most of them became about Cairo in the context of Cairo. Um, and so we felt that it was perfect to mm. kind of... Azima, you're in. definitely an artist. <laughs> What's, what is the first thing which comes to your mind when Cairo is mentioned? I'm going to take the answer right after the short break. <laughs> It is my pleasure to welcome you back to AUC Tahrir Square to celebrate the launch of the first AUC Tahrir Cultural Festival. Our historic campus in the heart of downtown Cairo is central to our identity and our vision to build and connect an ethically engaged community of scholars, practitioners and creatives. Welcome back, Azima. Uh, the first thing I think about when I think about Cairo um, is definitely um, is definitely sensory overload mm -hmm. or like this kind of chaos. There's so much going on all the time. Uh, the sounds, the sights, uh, people, experiences. There's just so much to take in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely something I kind of uh, explore and appreciate, I think, and try to absorb and put that out. In okay, way. let me put my question mm -hmm. in other words. Give me three pictures of Cairo Al in your imagination. First. Mm. Oh, that's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Cairo or Greater Cairo, by the way. I mean, yeah. I mean, the pyramids are included. Uh, I don't think I would go with like the pyramids. I think I would say a tahrir definitely for one. Number one. Um, hmm. Cars. I would say cars. Mm, cars. Traffic. Cars. Traffic. Congestion. Yeah. Um, and I would also say like shops. Mm -hmm. because they tend to be very uh, crowded they're everywhere no matter mm -hmm. where you go there's like a shop there <laughs> um, one of my photos is going to be very close photo to an Egyptian a man mm -hmm. or woman with black eyes with wonderful smile with the very simple look this is Egypt for me mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Campana mm -hmm. when it comes to Cairo Cairo had its own flavor and its own beauty all over centuries in every era, it has such uniqueness. Is it one of the uh, targets or the goals of the festival to let the people know about Cairo throughout centuries and, and not, uh, not decades, centuries and thousands of years? Yes, absolutely. We've had panels that are connecting medieval Cairo to contemporary Cairo. And I think even in the visual art, we've seen We've seen very current images, but we've seen images that are that for, from many, many years ago. The, 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 the stories of Cairo are so rich in every panel, and it really is this attempt to, to think about the city as it has always been, as it is now, maybe even as it will be in the future, because it's such a forward-looking country, mm -hmm. and it's such a forward-looking city. Uh, Azima, if you want to prepare for the next edition, mm -hmm. what would you do? Um, I think it would have to be another exhibition, mm. um, even if it's not as a student anymore. I would definitely love to be involved in some way. Mm. Um, the ideas, I think, are endless. Do uh, you prefer to work individually or in a team? You or know, both? <laughs> uh, uh, each thing has its time, you know, it depends on what we're doing, really. Um, it's really nice when you work on things individually and then come together as a group yeah. to kind of show them or exhibit them. But it's like a shared experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Campana, mm -hmm. I think um, you did some experience in the first edition and there are things which you are going to skip. There are things which you are going to modify. There yes. are others which you are going to add. Yes. Your dreams about the coming editions of the festival. You know, I think we've learned that families are really interested mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to bring young people so for example we had a puppet show for for young children oh. this year and I think this idea of more workshops mm -hmm. incorporating workshops so that people can come and actually partake another thing that has been incredible is tours mm -hmm. we've had walking and if you can believe it biking tours oh. biking tours biking. of downtown 40 people on a bike led by someone going into the into the downtown area this has been really popular those mm -hmm. actually people signed up right away so we want to have more of those because it's it's interesting even sure. even all the people who live downtown sometimes don't know certain areas and when you're on a tour there's a little bit of permission that you get to to look at things in a different way and to take photos and your eye is at a different level so i yep. think definitely the tours and more more programming for young people mm. young people um, how do you see the impression of young people i mean is it going to be more interesting or is it Practically, we can uh, attract more youngsters to come to share, to participate, and to enjoy uh, their time in such a festival, Azimo? Yeah, I think that, n like, specifically right now, young people are becoming more and more interested in, like, mm. the arts and culture scene. And um, this was, like, a very widely promoted event, so I, th I think it did uh, garner a lot of attention. Um, and there are people, I know, like, uh, my friends and, the, you know, young people Great, but I think social media can play a pivotal role here. Oh, of course, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, now you have a site? Uh, yes. Or a page we, or something? We do have a site, yes. We yeah. have a site and then we have a lot of postings on Instagram, on Facebook, and so hopefully we'll be able to follow that throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. This time, you know, people knew about it maybe three weeks ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So hopefully audiences will know next year, in April, mm -hmm. we'll do this again and they'll be excited about it and enthusiastic and feel that they're invited into the community of AUC. I think this is a, a lot of people may think that it, AUC is somewhat exclusive. The idea is that we need to include everyone. Mm -hmm. We want to include everyone. Mm -hmm. This is a, should be a shared experience. Everyone here, meaning families, um, yes. meaning different generations, all Absolutely. age categories, everyone. Yes, and people from all over. There are mm -hmm. a lot of foreigners living in Cairo who are interested in, in culture as well. Mm -hmm. So Egyptians and, and everyone, yeah. But 
Um, when I knew that the festival uh, is being held in cooperation with um, a publishing house a development li a li a library, um, you know, it made me also think about books, yes. about returning back yes. to the good old means <laughs> of yes, knowledge. Exactly. If this w was this one of the uh, of the targets too, or the goals of the festival too, to return th back to books? Yes, I think to leave so. Our tablets yes. or our screens. I mean, for this a this book fair has been held every year, once mm -hmm. a year, and we thought let's capitalize upon that. A lot of people go, people still read books mm -hmm. and a lot of people do go to look at the books but if we can sort of build a lot of events around that. So actually when you enter the campus you know there's this beautiful garden and the books are all outside. Mm -hmm. This is the other thing. So they're available. People can pick them up and peruse and look at them and, um, and, and hopefully think about how wonderful they are and how rich they are. We are reading books. Uh, yes or no question. Do you read books? I do read books. Yes. Great. <laughs> you still have hope. Well, I really enjoyed my time, but unfortunately we're running out of time. Let me uh, uh, thank my dear guests, Dr. Uh, Jillian Kimpana and Azima Salama. I enjoyed my time. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Well, I'm going to leave you now with, um, uh, with a promise to see them again in more episodes of our program, inshallah, and on Nile TV international screen. With all my love, this was Nirmina Abdurrahman. Many thanks for watching.